Low YouTube. Today I'm going to make a video showing you guys um, the little flame liquor engine I made. Um, I built this one from scratch actually. I didn't have any plans. I just looked at videos and pictures of other people's engines and just kind of won it. I watched a schematic on that I found on Google on what's actually happening internally. Uh, that gave me the idea of where to start and then I won it. So, the difference between this video and the other flame liquor video engines you're going to find on YouTube is I'm going to explain to you guys what I did to actually get this one to run. Because if you've done any research on them, they are very difficult to actually get to run and to stay to run. And quite honestly, this one's not running the greatest. It's running very slow, but it is running. And in my opinion, it's harder to keep one running slow than it is to have it running fast. But I'd still rather it be running at 1500 RPMs instead of 150 RPMs. But I'll show it to you running in a, shortly. But first off, um, for you that don't know what a flame liquor engine is, basically what it does is it's an external combustion engine and there's a little wick. And off that wick there's going to be a flame burning. So then there's also known as internal and external valves. So this is an internal valve engine because the valve is obviously inside the cylinder. And the way it works is there's a little pin in the end of the piston that will come up and push the valve open when it's top dead center. As the piston starts to go back in the cylinder, it hits a pin at the back here. You can see can see it there on the left of the cylinder and it comes back and it hits that pin. Pin pulls this rod and pulls the valve shut. So at bottom dead center it closes the valve. As the piston is going to bottom dead center it's sucking a flame into that hole. Um, when the valve closes the flame extinguishes it consumes the rest of the oxygen in there as well as cools down. And both those things combined to create a vacuum inside. The vacuum pulls the piston back up to the top and the inertia of the flywheel throws the valve open and it sucks in a new flame. And it goes over and over and over and over again. Now these engines are really, really picky. Um, the bore size is critical. Well, the bore size isn't critical, but the relation between your piston and the bore size is critical. You also want to make one with a relatively big piston. So I learned the hard way and then I'm going to try to help you guys that may be trying to make one of these because I've gone through a lot of pistons and I thought they were too small. I thought they were the problem. I've tried big ones, little ones. I actually had another cylinder. Um, I've tried them with rings. Well, not really rings either. You want zero friction. So instead of an o-ring in here I actually just relied on it filling up with a little bit of oil and it would act as a ring but that didn't work either I tried graphite now this is if the camera will focus it's like a centered graphite um, basically it's very porous now if you're trying to create a vacuum that doesn't do a good job all the air leaks through it so I tried to seal the end with some super glue that also didn't work and I'll tell you why. When I made the first cylinder for this, I made the piston way too small. I made the drilled the cylinder too small and everything. The old pistons, these ones, are just over 5 eighths. And for you metric guys. Call it 16 and a half millimeters. The new pistons are just under 24 and a half, about one inch, just under an inch. Now, what I found is the more surface area you have on the piston, you have more vacuum force, right? The only thing that's making this engine run is the atmospheric pressure pushing on the back of the piston here. So, the more surface area, more push. So if you are going to make one of these, I recommend going with the biggest possible piston you can. The other thing I found is the distance between 
here and the inside needs to be very slim. You want the flame to go inside there relatively hot and you don't want any of that heat robbed up on its way into the cylinder. So make that as thin as possible, make your piston as big as possible, as well as make the whole thing to have as minimal friction as possible. It should almost just free spin. Um, all these things combined will lead to a successful engine. Although, again, because this is running on very minimal amounts of energy, they're only like 5% efficient if that. Um, if there's any sort of leakage around anything, or if they're, your cylinder and your pistons aren't honed, um, they aren't machined with a really nice surface finish on them, it's most likely going to leak around there and not work for you. Um, others with their engines, they say they'll only run dry, so they will not run with oil. Others use powdered graphite. Um, I've tried both of those things. Dry doesn't work. Powdered graphite doesn't work. This engine actually requires uh, some thin oil. WD-40 or diesel fuel is what I've been working or using, and it's been working for me. Um, the other thing is if you're doing two flywheels for the first time, it's a pain in the ass, I'm not even going to lie. And use as thick of a connecting pin here because that's basically that's all that's holding those two flywheels and mine's actually come loose and I need to remake my crank. If I could do it again I'd probably make it with one flywheel just for simplicity but it still functions it still runs. But yeah basically what I've done with this engine here is this is all bronze. The pistons are chromoly steel no reason for that it's just the closest size I had on hand. Um, the flywheels here are just mild steel I drilled them out on the rotary table on the mill, uh, painted them just for fun. Chunk of brass at the back, machined out to fit a couple of bearings. I used bearings from the tip of a router, just quarter inch. So quarter inch shaft runs into the bearing, it's pressed into the half of the crank, and crank is further pressed together out the other side the little covers on the top come off so you can take the crank out. The crank and the piston are now one piece. I left the pin on the piston there. If I can get it in the frame. The piston on the frame in the back there, I left it long so that I can pull it out and change the pistons because I've been having issues with pistons. Um, currently I got some solid graphite coming in the mail, a one inch diameter, which I'm gonna try graphite pistons in this again. But it's high density, it's not this uh, spongy graphite. This graphite itself is actually from a clay graphite crucible. So this is basically just a bunch of pieces of graphite glued together. It's good for uh, melting metal, but it's not so good for making a piston in a vacuum engine. So the way I built mine, the stand is actually the fuel tape. Also, don't mind the tape. Um, I acid etched my name into it. And no offense, guys, but you don't need to know my name. But anyway, back to the engine here. Solid chunk of brass on the bottom here. Um, bronze piston, bronze ring to hold the cylinder, sorry. Bronze cylinder, bronze ring to hold the cylinder. Little aluminum riser and brass steel. Um, what I did was I bored out the brass in the bottom, machined it hollow, and that's my fuel tank. Machined a cap out of steel. One screw goes in the top, holds it all together. Wick comes through here, and that's my fuel port. Little cap here, you can open it up and fill it up. Um, I've been running it on just like alcohol just because I don't want it to soot up. I found this engine works a lot better with like a propane flame, not a torch, obviously, um, just like a lighter flame, but significantly bigger than a lighter. It works a lot better with that. So play around with the flames. As for flame positioning, I found that the flame pretty much has to be halfway up that hole. Um, on the piston downstroke, when it's sucking the flame in, it's sucks it in on half the hole and when it opens up to exhaust the gases as they exhaust out the other side 
if it's right in the middle it sucks the flame in and when it comes up it blows the flame out so offset the flame to the side a bit um other than that let's fire it up and see how it runs So sometimes these engines have to heat up, um, the cylinder has to expand to accommodate, those are really depends on the engine. If it's designed to run after thermal expansion, then it'll actually be tight when it's cold. Now mine's machined at room temperature, it spins freely, so my engine will run for a few minutes, but then it'll overheat, the cylinder expands at a different rate than the piston does, then it starts to leak and the engine will stall out. With the new graphite that I'm ordered in the mail, I'm going to machine it as a tighter fit and rely on the engine having to be warm, and then it should run continuously. There it overheated, and that's pretty much it. At this point, it'll struggle a little bit. If it had a bit of oil, it would seal up the cylinders, but I don't want to go that route. I'm going to correct this. I'm going to use graphite pistons, and I'm going to design it to run hot instead of at room temperature. This way, it should run for until it runs out of fuel. But anyway. It's so long for now. Um, that's all I have about this video. Thanks for watching.